This episode of Akio TV is going to be quite fun to make and hopefully also quite fun to watch because I'm going to be doing something that I haven't done in a while um, which is building a computer. As you can see I've got some components on the table but I'm not just going to build an, a regular computer for desktop use I'm going to be building a storage server. So first of all why would I want to build a storage server? Well, actually I've already got a storage server. It's right behind me over here. Uh, it's some sort of old Acer desktop PC that I turned into a NAS. I turned it into a storage server. Um, it's running Ubuntu servers or a Linux operating system and, well, it works. But it has some problems. So first of all, it doesn't have that much storage capacity, only 320 gigabytes, and it doesn't have any free SATA ports, so I, I cannot add any more hard drives. Also, it doesn't have any PCI Express slots, so I can't add a RAID controller either. And I'm definitely not going to use USB hard drives. <laughs> That's not going to happen. The other problem that it has is that it's very unstable and very unreliable and has loads of issues, which is not really what you want in a, a storage server. A storage server is supposed to be a safe, reliable machine that stores your data, because data is valuable and it shouldn't be in an unstable, unsafe machine. So we're going to be building a new storage server today. So let's take a look at the components that we're going to use to do that. Now, I went to a local computer repair shop and they had this old um, motherboard laying around uh, with a CPU and RAM already installed. Uh, and they said it was actually broken, but then we tested it and it turns out that it, it works. So this is a, a gigabyte motherboard with a, a Q6600 2.4 gigahertz quad core CPU in it and 4 gigabytes of RAM. So that's actually very nice for a file server. Then for the hard drive, for the actual storage, I'll be using this one terabyte Western Digital Blue drive uh, to start off with. So I'm going to add more storage to this server because it has enough SATA ports. I can add a RAID card if I want to. But we're going to start with this one terabyte drive because for now that will be enough. And then for the power supply, it's the same, same story here. I bought a brand new 350 watt unit from Corsair because it's a nice, it's a brand that I trust. It's a good power supply. It provides enough power for the system and it'll do the job. So now, you might be wondering, what, what kind of case are you going to put these components into? Well, I've got this. This is, let's see if I can get it in, into the frame properly, a 19-inch shelf. So the reason I bought this is because, first of all, it's very cheap. And then also, it, fin it fits into the DIY server rack that I have constructed. You'll see that one later on in this video. Now, it did, it's not really made for computer components, so I did have to drill these uh, holes in it so that I can actually mount the hardware. Uh, but it is going to be quite a nice little enclosure because, again, it will allow me to mount everything into a server rack, which is pretty cool. So now without further ado, let's get started building this thing. Arguably it's not really an enclosure, it's more like a tray or a shelf that you put things onto, but it doesn't really matter, it allows me to mount the stuff the way I want it to be mounted. So now, usually when you're building a computer, the first thing you put in is the, um, the motherboard or the power supply, depends what's most convenient. With this thing, I think it will be the most convenient to uh, start off by mounting the hard drive, which is going to be mounted to these two holes here, which will be using screws from the other side, which is why we have to tilt it like so, which will be harder to do when all of the other components are already there. So that's why I'm starting off with the hard drive. So as you can see, the hard drive is now in position and I've also inserted these M3 bolts through the back of this uh, shelf, which means that we can now install the motherboard. Now before we do that, we do need to put three washers 
onto each one of these and they will act as our motherboard standoffs. Then we can take the motherboard, then we can simply lower it down like so and then we use these tiny, tiny little nuts to hold it in position. There you can see our motherboard is now firmly in position, which means we can continue and start installing the power supply. And this power supply will be mounted into the case this way. So normally the power supply is at the back, but because of all these cables sticking out the back, I thought it doesn't, you know, I realized it doesn't look very pretty if you've got all of this stuff at the front of your server. So I decided we just put this power supply the other way around so that this is at the front, which actually looks quite, you know, tidy. And then we can simply have all these cables sit in the back so that you don't see them when you look at the front of the server, which is just a bit prettier. So how we're going to mount this power supply is very, very simple. We're going to be using this double-sided tape. we putting them on this way, just like that. Now there we go, take our power supply of course with the fan facing up, you don't want to suffocate it, that would be very very bad, and also potentially a fire hazard, and then we simply firmly press it in position, that's not going to go anywhere, you see that? Okay, so now let's wire everything up, shall we? So this is a big bunch of cables and I'm not going to use many of them so I want to keep that as compact as I can while I'm doing this so first of all we need to grab ourselves the ATX connector that will go to the, um, the motherboard 24 pin connector so that will go actually I've already failed at keeping this a compact thing so we'll have to reorganize that so now just get it over here and then plug that straight into the motherboard. Great. So now, um, at least for the hardware part, this server is done. Now what we need to do is install an operating system on it. So I'm going to install Ubuntu Server on it, uh, which is pretty boring. So I'm not going to uh, show that in the video. So when I'm done installing the operating system, I'll be right back. And then we're going to install this unit into the server rack. So before we continue, I'd like to introduce my DIY server rack over here. Uh, so it's, well, it's a DIY server rack made from aluminium corner profile, and it works really well. It holds any kind of standard size server equipment. Uh, the only thing that's weird about it, because anything that I create usually has something weird about it, is that it's very, very low. And that's, of course, because it needs to fit into this very, well, low area. I don't have a lot of space for my equipment, so that's also why we have this very low server rack. Now, as you can see, I've already installed this shelf right here, which will hold the network switch and the old server, because the old server well, will still be there as a backup, and then we're going to mount the new server at the bottom of the rack down here. So, I've got the server right here, and I've also got some tools and some mounting hardware uh, to actually install it in the rack. Alright, so let's see if we can install. You know what? I need some support. Hold on a second. Alright, so we just put the video card box in here. That will be the temporary support for when the server is not actually secured yet. So, here we go. The server can slide into the rack. 
Oh, look at how well that fits. Isn't that beautiful right there? Okay, so this is the uh, the old server right here. Uh, it's much smaller than the new one, as you can see. Uh, so we're simply going to slide the server onto this shelf, just like that. And then I also need the hard drive for it, because the hard drive of this server is not actually uh, inside this server. So we need to put it in here. So here is our network switch. It's just a little 8 port gigabit net gear unit and that will simply slide into the remaining free space of our rack. So now all that's left to do is to well connect everything so the cabling So it's now a couple of days later, um, all of the cable management has been done and everything is working the way it should. So the new server is working, the old server is still working um, and all of the equipment has been organised into this nice compact rack instead of being all over the place. So I'm quite satisfied with the result and I think we could call this project a success. And that brings us to the end of this very, very long video. So um, all that's left to say for me is, of course, thank you for watching.